Hello and a very warm welcome to this, the third edition of our Feed Forward webazine, entitled The Future of Feed Milling. As we get to the end of an unprecedented year, our thoughts naturally turn to what's in store for the industry in 2021 and beyond. To find out, we've been running a project called Milling 2030 that's involved speaking to customers, farmers and other industry figures to discover what would add the most value for them in future. Then, we brought together our sister Triop companies to brainstorm ideas on how we could get there. In this episode of Feed Forward, we'll give you an idea of what a digital and data-driven future could look like. What does it actually mean on a practical level? How do you benefit? And how long will it take to get there? You'll get some quick-fire insights from our feed milling customers and experts. You'll receive a glimpse into what the longer-term future could hold from René Ottervanger, Triot's new Head of Innovation and Technique. We'll discuss what Triot is already doing to make this future a reality now, from Marianne Laurenser, the recently appointed Managing Director of Intechnion, our Automation Specialist. And we'll hear from Alka Markerink, who oversees all customer relationships at Ottervanger. While we don't claim to have all the answers, we are committed to finding them by working together with everyone in the industry, including you. Call it our New Year's resolution. Welcome. We're here today to talk about the future of feed milling. And what better person to kick off this topic than René Ottervanger in his new role overseeing innovation and technique at Triot. René, welcome. My first question to you is, are you ready to join our viewers in stepping into the feed mill of the future? Yes. Yes? Here we go. That's good. <laughs> Looks good, huh? Yeah. Like what I've done with the place? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> now, before we start uh, digging into the future of uh, feed milling, uh, let's let's quickly recap uh, where we stand now at the, at the present moment with, with Triot. Yeah. Well, actually, today um, we are building turnkey uh, feed mills for our customers, which means that uh, we design and manufacture all the machinery and we deliver all the electrics, control and automation. But uh, we see more and more value um, in the day-to-day -day processes of the feed mill, where we can help our customers. Okay, so the idea is to help feed mill customers unlock more value from what they already have. Yes, exactly. Uh, get more value uh, out of their machinery, out of their people and their total invest investment. And in this way, um, uh, increase the quality of the product, uh, increase the tonnage, and of course the profitability of the plant. So, based on the work that that you've been doing, I think for over 18 years now. Yes. Yeah. On 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 projects like feed automation and, and software, um, what does the feed mill of the future look like? I mean, anything like this? Yeah, something like this. Uh, in 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 principle, we. Uh, connect all the um, at at all levels. We uh, we connect the plant, so uh, on mechanical level, in electrical level, and digital. And when we do that, we can look beyond the feed mill. So from field to feed mill, uh, to the farm via the cloud. And my colleague Marijn will tell you uh, more about it later. Okay, and, and how does this connecting these, these different levels inside the feed mill actually benefit the feed mill owner? Well, actually the owner of the, of the feed mill, um, he can see uh, what his plant is, is doing, so uh, he, can, he can oversee the, the process. Uh, actually the operator uh, can see via his PC, tablet or phone, uh, how much uh, the uh, um, the plant is is running, the quality of the feed he is making, and he can see if the plant is running efficiently. Uh, efficiently in in what way? Well, he can, for instance, solve bottlenecks uh, and choke points in his plant, and he can also see when machinery is due to maintenance. So that's what we call data-driven milling. Data-driven milling. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm keen to know more, but first, uh, we thought 
we're very grateful today actually to be joined by three special guests from three different continents. Gentlemen, please introduce yourselves. My name is Wayne Cooper. I am a long-term feed department and operations manager here in Iowa in the central part of the U.S., uh, approximately 22 or 23 years, in fact. And then I took a job with an integrator in Russia, and we were sup I was supervising seven feed mills uh, that all needed a lot of help. So it was a really intense experience that got me familiar with the international scene in feed milling and intensified what I'm doing now as a, as a contract person with Anderson Feed Technology. My name is Albert Gertkater and I'm a uh, business consultant in um, uh, mainly business strategy and putting strategy into action. And uh, my main focus is on food and agri business and also on the, on the uh, feed milling companies. My name is Mario Ocampo. I'm the CEO of Nutravicola, which is a poultry producer in Colombia. We are the third commercial producer of eggs uh, for our country. Uh, I am a business administrator. Um, I have now the challenge um, uh, to drive these companies for the future. Well, here in the United States, we're looking at a lot of automation in the mill, and it really turns the feed mill into a very large robot that is intended to make feed. So the operator's job then becomes uh, controlling the robot, feeding it ingredients, telling it what to do, uh, and setting up the production scheme. I, I would say the future of feed milling is, will be a more efficiency, adapting to new technologies, more data analysis, uh, more uh, the possibility of using other materials that will come to the uh, to the world of animals. Uh, I would say it will be uh, a continuous changing rule, rule changing for the future. What comes to mind to me is that uh, feed mills nowadays, especially in North Northern Western Europe, have to deal with an increasing level of complexity. What we see in practice is more and different kinds of raw materials to be used. We see more individual processing of raw materials in the feed mill. We see an increasing amount of market concepts and tailor-made products. And we also see more just-in-time production of smaller batches. Well, we know that the traditional layout of feed mills is often not designed for this complexity. And in practice, this leads to a lower output of the feed mill and to an increase of the operational costs per ton. So the future of feed milling to me is to redesign or adjust the layout of feed mills and to select the most profitable projects in complex situations. Well, there is a clear common theme from all our experts here. More complexity and diversity in the feed mill that presents, of course, an increasing challenge and requires smart thinking and technology to overcome. Now, before I ask you, Rene, about your thoughts, uh, what do you guys think? As ever, our live stream is open and we are ready to take all your questions and comments. So please, don't be shy. We really do want to know what you think about this topic. Um, so, back to you, Rene. Uh, now, I know you've been addressing mm -hmm. uh, all these themes in, in a project called Milling 2030. Yeah. Um, and you've mm -hmm. been running that at, at Triad for quite some time, and you're trying to build a 360-degree view of, mm -hmm. of the needs of the feed mill owner. Uh, but what is the long-term vision there? Well, I think it's uh, just like our customers um, just been saying and, um, how how do feed mills become more agile to to run more complex processes uh, with our milling to 30 projects um, we are looking at the longer term and um, population is growing the need for protein food is growing so also the uh, the demand of the feed mills is also uh, growing and becoming more complex. Okay, and can you give an example of, of an idea that, that, that came out of, the, of this project? 
Yes, by um, connecting everything uh, in the feed mill, um, we could create what we call, um, let's say, a digital twin, a complete computerized simulation of the plant. A digital twin? Yeah. Wow. So how exactly does that work? Well, in, in principle, um, get rid of all the drawings. And um, today, let's say all uh, or, or most of the decisions about the setup of the feed mill uh, are based on very technical, detailed drawings. And instead of using the drawings, we could create a fully operational virtual feed mill um, where we can simulate every single process. Okay, so what is the, what is the actual benefit there for, for the feed mill owner? Well, actually, uh, feed mills can make decisions based on the simulation. Uh, uh, for instance, they have uh, different uh, setups, different formulations, different machinery. Um, and they can all test that in a virtual environment. And the, the main benefit is that they can make better decision um, based on, on the simulation of it without having to do uh, a lot of investment. Uh, so that's the, the main benefit of it. And how far away are we from this? Well, this is our vision, but uh, definitely if it's uh, achievable. Um, and together with our customers, we are, let's say, refining uh, these concepts into more value for the customer. How do you get started on something like this? Well, actually, we, we already started. Uh, we, um, we already have a cloud-based platform where we, um, where we collect and analyze data. And this is already running successfully at a production location here in Holland. And uh, in addition to this, we, we also work on, let's say, startup ideas to, to get more added value uh, to the to the platform and um, more or less prove the concept. So you start with baby steps mm -hmm. and then you really hope to picking up speed. We are not claiming to have all the answers. Yeah. Huh? <laughs> um, of course, there are feed mills and and and, and plants around that uh, are already yeah also busy with these kind of processes. But all over the world, there are feed mills who can. Uh, we can provide with our support. And I think the unique at Triot is that we combine the technique with our deep knowledge of feed milling industry. While concepts like the digital twin are really quite novel, many feed mills are actually embracing the digital age to various degrees, of course. Now let's see what our experts think in North America, South America and Europe. We use the data constantly to, to schedule the production line, um, especially in timing out the mixing systems and making yeah. sure that the mill is, is hitting full production and finding choke points that we can fix to improve the operations. Well, very important role. Um, certainly when you have a look at the more modern uh, uh, feed mills, for example, in, in Northwest Europe, uh, we see that the automation of modern feed mills nowadays can provide in a lot of data. And this data can be used for analyzing efficiency in the production process. When there is a gap between the available data and the required data, then new sensor technology can help to provide in this. But best practice, in my opinion, is to start with data which is already available. And we see that this is often more than companies do realize. And analyzing this data can help to discover current bottlenecks in the production process. About clients, we have uh, some data or data enough to do the analysis. I would say where we have uh, behind, maybe in the, in the farm, uh, not because of the statistics, analysis of the conversion or production, but uh, putting all the information, the data together, temperature, humidity, uh, in real time. So in a way that we can take decisions right now with the data from two minutes ago and now from past weeks or something like that. 
the song that is coming, uh, uh, and it will drive uh, the future of the this business. So we can see that this is the future. Now, it feels to me that the key point is that mill owners should be spending time on the what and the why of producing a product that delivers optimal nutrition to the farm animal, while guys like Triot help them with the how, so the production process. Isn't that right, Rene? Yes, in fact, that's right. Um, um, in, in future, we more or less hope to liberate or empower let's say the feed mill owners and their operation from the day-to-day -day process, um, so they can focus on what's really important, and their customers. Um, and maybe in far future, uh, milling actually becomes a service. And how would that differ then from what happens right now? Well, actually, um, the entire production facility will be leased or outsourced to companies like Triot, who would take care of the production, and the customer actually pays per ton feed produced. And that sounds quite radical. Well, if you think about it, and milling as a service makes a lot of sense. Um, other industries already doing it for a long time, like uh, manufacturers of copiers. Eh? Actually, the, the customer is paying per copy. Okay, but this is new to the milling industry, right? Well, in fact, the milling industry uh, started it centuries ago. Um, our company um, uh, began fixing windmills, but our ancestors uh, would bring bags of wheat to the local miller, and the local miller would turn it into wheat for a certain fee. Um, milling as a service. Thank you, René. Now, staying with the theme of looking ahead, uh, we asked our experts what uh, they thought about the opportunities and challenges, of course, involved in creating the feed mill of the future. The greatest opportunity is the large amount of new equipment that's coming on that's automated and completely controlled. Um, it just makes it the mill so much more efficient and minimal labor now needed in that in that mill. I would say one of the best opportunity is that the customer really knows your company, the commitment, how do you produce, how transparent are with your clients, what are your commitments if your commitments are the same to the client as a person and uh, if they do a match or not because with the new technologies as we the companies have the opportunity to know the client the client also has the opportunity to know the company uh, in a clear way so it, it is not a matter of saying i am but getting recognized by the client that i believe i do uh, um, that will drive i would say a more aware customer uh, because of the data is really open widely for everybody. But on the other things, <clears throat> the data you're talking to me, uh, oh, oh, the data from farm, for port production, for distribution, for logistics, will challenge us to be more efficient, more efficient every day to have lower costs, lower chain distribution, lower time, more information on everything you want to know. Well, I think the greatest opportunity is to turn available data into a clear analysis of feed mill performance. And next to that, use this information for a proper investment selection. The greatest challenge is the variety of mills that we're looking at that need to do different things. We've got everything from standard swine feed mills to um, antibiotic free mills, organic mills, aqua feed mills. And can one mill do it? What can one mill design do all of these things or does it need to be different mills? I don't, the answer to that is different for every client. Well, I'm happy to say that in cooperation with Otterwanger, 
we developed a model which can be used to calculate the influence on, of complexity on feed mill output and the influence on operational costs. And the outcome of this model gives an insight in the profits to be achieved by adjusting the layout of a feed mill. And I think the greatest challenge or concern is to make feed producers aware of this before they select their investment projects. Because by choosing the right projects, sometimes even smaller investments can lead to a higher profitability. The greatest challenge will be to have our people, our co-workers, really concerned and open mind to new technologies to come. So they find the right technology that will give us the opportunity. So the only guarantee for the future is we'll, we have a continuous evolution and adapting will be the rule. So to have your team ready for that, I would say is one of the greatest challenges because technology will come. Even if we are not prepared or not, they will come. Interesting. What do you think about the opportunities and threats? Please keep sending in your thoughts via the chat. Now, I'm here with Marijn Lawrence from Intechnion, who joined as Managing Director on October 1st, after spending many years working in control and automation in everything from automotive to meat processing. And Auke Markering from Ottofanger, who's responsible for overseeing the customer relations. Welcome, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Jens, any thoughts on what you've just seen? Yeah, it's really interesting. Uh, and you see that uh, the industry is moving faster and faster, and the digitalization is going also very fast. Uh, Auke? Yeah, well, actually, over the past months, uh, we have uh, conducted our Milling 2030 uh, project, where we did quite some interviews with uh, consultants, customers, uh, farmers. And what we have uh, learned uh, during these interviews is that the market demands a very high degree of flexibility. So every uh, species gets its own uh, feed, uh, all tailored to the certain stage of his, uh, his life and uh, sometimes to specific circumstances like uh, illnesses of the, of the animals. And we have to provide our customers with, uh, with the tools to make the right amount of feed, but also exactly according to the nutritional and quality uh, parameters and uh, not to forget uh, against the lowest possible cost. Marijn, you've spent many years working in control and automation in a variety of uh, industries, so you provide a kind of fresh set of eyes to, to the industry. I hope so, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so what could uh, the future look like, according to you? Yeah, I think uh, just what uh, Arkan uh, said, to achieve this uh, goal, sir, to, uh, to have a better quality and higher speed in your production process, digitalization is key. There are still a lot of human beings involved in a production process. And when you have to want to achieve a constant quality and a higher output, you want to bring the brains, let's say, from the operator more and more to the production process. An operator can see, can feel, uh, can touch. He collects a lot of data, brains is analyzing. What do you think here, Auke? Yeah, we've all seen what Mr. Getkaat uh, just said. There's already uh, lots of data available within the feed mill, and it uh, actually just needs to be connected together. Uh, so let's let's use it. And I think it's really the the low hanging fruit. It's it's not only for the for the big mills, but also for the smaller mills. It's available. Um, even though we have heard some advanced uh, ideas for the future today, we have to realize that uh, some of the feed mills are just at the beginning of this digitization uh, theme. Um, and maybe this is also a nice moment to, again, like you did, uh, invite uh, the viewers to join us via the chat. Yeah, good point. Um, myself, as a non-technical person, um, I, I sometimes wonder if, if jargon like big data and, and cloud computing and AI uh, could maybe sometimes intimidate a few people a little bit. I mean, Marijn, what does it actually mean on a practical level, like the cloud computing? Yeah, it sounds that, that some people are a little bit afraid of it, but we are really used to it. We are using uh, online meetings, we have uh, our social media, we have uh, using our Dropbox. Everything is already cloud computing. It's nothing else than uh, one way to collect data from different kind of points, and that helps a lot. Okay, big data, but what does it mean for the, the feed mill owner? 
And for example, you want to know how much energy it costs to produce one ton of feed. If you have made that analyze, you can compare it also to another feed mill. And then you can make decisions to, make, uh, to finally reduce the cost. And the next thing is also, is not only collecting uh, data from a feed mill, but also from your customers. Uh, if you, for example, can collect the amount of feed what is inside of a silo of your uh, farmer, it helps you to keep that uh, feed on a certain kind of, of, of level. Uh, it helps you a lot, I think, for planning and schedule your pr pr production process. Auge, in your role uh, at Ottervanger, you're very close, of course, to customers and feed mills. Uh, you could say that you're some sort of advocate uh, for the customer. Are these kind of concepts um, uh, exciting yeah, for customers? Yeah, we think so. And actually, we are already doing that uh, at Ottervanger. Uh, so the, the Green Cam is a very nice example of that. Green Cam. We, we, episode yeah, which one. episode one of uh, of Feed Forward. If you have seen it, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> please be invited to uh, <laughs> to check <laughs> to check again. Um, but what it does, it um, it measures the the particle size distribution, and um, our customers commonly use uh, actually uh, a uh, analog and uh, manual method, uh, which is um, yeah pretty time consuming. It's it's this deceive analysis, uh, by the way. And uh, with the Green Cam, we use a vision and robotics solution to collect this information uh, digitally, but also instantly. And how exactly does this uh, benefit the customer? Yeah, well, instead of uh, taking one sample uh, every, let's say, 30 tons of product, we can now take uh, a sample every three seconds or even more if you want. And uh, now it starts to become interesting because you can use this data to change the machine settings and uh, you can do that instantly. The thing that comes across very strongly in this customer segment is, is the need for a uh, service partner. Yeah. What do you make of this, uh, Marijn? I agree with you, but uh, the customer needs are also very different. We have different kind of uh, customers, not only here, but all over the world, but specified uh, different kind of needs. And we will help them with our technology and service, especially for the feed mill industry. So we have a common technology platform, but we apply it differently. So how does that work, uh, Auke? It's not uh, that digitization and data is the goal uh, itself. The goal uh, itself is to increase the productivity at our customers, to increase uh, the uptime. And actually, traditionally, Ottervanger is a company uh, good at making uh, great machines. We still succeed in doing that. But previously, it was so that the delivery of the machine meant uh, the end of the project. But we increasingly uh, realized that for the customer, it's only the beginning. Eh? So they, they buy a, a workhorse and they have to make a, a living uh, from it. And uh, we have to make sure that these uh, workhorses are, are treated well and so they can, uh, they can do the job for our customer. Could you give an example of how you would help a customer increase his uptime? Yes, for example, we can do that with uh, predictive maintenance. This is very relevant uh, for increasing this, uh, this uptime. Um, so instead of reacting to issues, you want to become uh, predictive. You want to be proactive uh, so that uh, the operation can, uh, can avoid these issues. Um, and actually for that, uh, years and years ago, we already founded a separate and dedicated entity uh, which is Ottervanger Services, and they fully focus on these uh, services and spare parts in order to uh, increase the uptime at, at the customer's operations. Okay, so how does that work? Uh, yeah, here we get back to the, to the data again. It needs to be connected uh, together. Uh, take a hammer mill, for example. So uh, we used to count uh, the running hours of the hammer mill, but it's, it's not only about this uh, running hours. It, it also depends on what you use it for. Uh, what do you mean exactly? Well, this, this ind industry is characterized by uh, a great number of uh, parameters. Uh, so our customers, they work with hundreds uh, of natural ingredients. They make uh, even more recipes uh, of these ingredients. And these uh, ingredients, they vary in, in density, in moisture level, in hardness, for example. And um, we want to use this information to uh, predict this moment of, uh, the right moment of uh, hammer exchange. Yeah. And can you already do this? Well, we have developed a service and maintenance module, which is running on a pilot scale at the moment. 
And this uh, really helps us to get uh, significant insight um, in planning maintenance per machine. And eventually you want an alert to sound when the main maintenance is uh, required. Great stuff. So we are looking into a future where the feed mill runs itself. Yeah, we always need people, I think. Eh? Uh, but we need less operators. Uh, and Auke, again, I ask you um, from your customer's perspective on this. I mean, it sounds all wonderful, but yeah. how realistic is this? Yeah, so you asked, uh, will the feed mill run itself in the future? Well. Um, my personal opinion, uh, the Germans would say uh, jein, meaning uh, yes and no. Uh, so for the routine jobs, uh, yes. And also from a competitiveness uh, standpoint, they have to, because it's a really competitive market and they, uh, they have to be as efficient as possible. Uh, but the automation grade uh, has also to do with the uh, investment level. So I don't think it will happen that it uh, completely runs without uh, a crew uh, on site. Uh, and we may never forget that our customer, they know all the details. They know the local market circumstances. And it's a challenging market. So I think there will be always people on site. But um, by using the, the data, the number of people, I expect, will reduce. Yes. Any last words on what has been a challenging year for all of us uh, in so many ways, Marijn? Yeah, it's, it's really been uh, a challenging uh, year, but the uh, technology is going on. Let's say we will be there to help our customers and uh, bring them on a higher level. Uh, Auke? Yeah, that's right. Um, we really uh, need and value the input of our, our customers. And from here, uh, we'd like to thank uh, all of our customers for the, for the past year. It has been a quite a challenging year for all of us. And from here, uh, yeah, we, we look forward to uh, working with all of our customers in 2021 again. Ah, uh, René, huh. uh, anything final to add maybe? Well, actually, I couldn't agree more with, uh, with my colleagues. But of course, I would like to wish all of you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year from the Triot Group. And I sincerely hope to see you all again in 2021 when Feed Forward, episode four, will be focusing on the conditioning of feed. Last but not least, a huge thank you to our three special guests today for their insight and inspiration. Mario Ocampo, Wayne Cooper and Albert Getkate. Our New Year's resolution is, is twofold. Uh, number one, we do service first. Number two, then we are capable of designing individual mills to meet the customer's needs. I did an evaluation once where the customer was asking me to find space for additional mill, mill construction. And in the end, evaluated his current operations to the point that he could do what he could get everything done in the mill that he's got if he runs it properly. So my recommendation was you don't need to build anymore. If it came to building more, um, we design very carefully with that customer in mind. We do not do cookie cutter mills. We communicate with the customer to design exactly what he needs to make feed for his customers. I, I will divide this answer in two. <clears throat> the first, uh, always commitment has been, uh, we wanna have a company with welfare for everybody around us, our customer, our employees, our animals, our environment, our community. But in this year, due to the pandemic, we have to slide a little bit, keeping our, our commitment with this resolution and adding that we want to be there in the future for our customer because this is a challenging year, a challenging year with economic uh, restraint, restrictions. So we want to be there. And being there give us the possibility to have our commitment for, our, for everybody. Well, then we have to look in the future, it's always difficult, but I would say for 2021, plan, do, act and check, but most of all, be prepared for the unexpected, especially in these Corona times. 
the best gift you can give to someone who owns and operates the mills is a really, really good feed mill manager. They are a unique individual today. They are highly talented. They are skilled professional people and they, they understand the technology well. So give them a compensation package that works both for them and for you and keep them around as long as you possibly can. Be adaptable, be flexible, <clears throat> uh, be nice uh, with all around you. Uh, I would say that we are, are flexible under this situation, but we also have the commitment to go through even with the difficulties that come, we will be there in the future and we will, be, we will build a stronger relation with everybody around us. And if you have that, you may keep going in your purpose of life. So it's goodbye from us all here in the virtual studio for now. Stay healthy and keep looking forward. Many thanks for joining us today for this, our final feed forward of the year. Next year, we'll be ramping up our work on Feedmill 2030 even further, test driving some new ideas and concepts with our customers, and developing prototypes and potential solutions to hopefully make them a reality. So, don't be surprised if we get in touch. And of course, if you feel like getting in touch with us, we'd be delighted to talk some more about the future of feed milling. In the meantime, we hope you'll join us in the new year for the next episode of Feed Forward.